All right, I just wanted to make a quick overview video of the Chinook in its current form. Uh, we've got big plans for the Chinook and uh, just kind of wanted to document what it looks like at the moment before we start to modify it. So we'll start with the exterior, as you can see, for the most part, it's fairly stock. Except for the tires we put on there. Um, these are the General Grabber, the ATs. And if you're curious, these are on the stock wheels and they are 27 by eight and a half or 14s. So not a lot of options in this, in this size, but I wanted something that was a little wider and that kind of would give us a little bit more a little bit more traction um, when we're on the, the back roads. Fits really well, no rubbing or any issues like that. Of course, it just looks a lot cooler than the skinny tires that are normally on here. As you can see, I've got the Hella H4 conversions on the high beams, and I had planned to do the same to the low beams, but I just never got around to it. And I also have kind of an amber overlay on the high beams. Just gives it kind of a, a retro look. I found some some of the old Hilux badges on a, on a parts truck, so grabbed those and stuck them on here. But for the most part, it's pretty stock on the outside. It looks like it has two exhaust tips, but actually one of these goes into the. Uh, diesel heater that's inside and I'll show you that here in a second but I figured you know kind of give it kind of a stock look and I've got the diesel heater exhaust hidden inside the other the other outlet and I've removed the stock the stock heater the stock propane heater so eventually I will close this off or you know eliminate it completely I haven't decided yet but for now it's blocked off I've added a little bit of, you know, grip tape in the back for now. I still need to repair the back door. But yeah, for the most part, it's pretty clean on the interior. So let's take a look at the engine. As you can see, this has the 22R installed. Um, it originally, it came with the 20R and the four-speed transmission. So when I had planned to do the five-speed transmission, I just went ahead and swapped over the 22R that I had. Um, I was able to reuse the the 3236 Weber and the uh, the wrapped pace setter header for it so um, it's a pretty straightforward swap so I figured mine as well I figured I just you know gain a little bit of horsepower and torque by swapping over the 22 and it's also a lot easier to find parts for it so just swapped everything over and uh, eh, made a noticeable improvement but, it, but overall it's still pretty slow So yeah, as you can see, it has the aftermarket 3236 Weber. Um, had a installed a catch can, so I was getting a little bit of blow by from the uh, filter that I used to have up here. I actually started by having two filters on the valve cover, and the rear filter started spewing oil out of it. So I reinstalled the PCV system in it, and then I started having the same problem with the front. Um, at highway speed, so just went ahead and just eliminated both of them and got a catch can and this has kind of solved it. I've never seen any oil come from here, so that seemed to fix it. 
So you can see you have the inline pressure gauge. You got the regulator for the fuel, um, you know, fuel filter. The bay's actually kind of dirty right now. I haven't driven it in a couple months. Part of the reason I'm starting this next phase of the of the build is because this is the second fuel pump that has gone out on me. I'm not really sure what the, what the reason is, if there's some sort of resistor or something that's frying the pump, but um, so yeah, I'm just kind of over it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just start the next phase of the build. And, um, you know, I had fun while it was on the stock chassis. So it's, you know, time to, time to start doing something else. As you can see, I repainted the bay eliminated a lot of the emissions and just kind of cleaned it up to make it easier to work on while we're on the road. I mean, it's been a it's been a pretty good chassis so far, but you know, I've got other plans for it. And here's the interior. It's really it's very stock. The only difference you're going to see is there's a voltmeter that I installed in there, which also has the USB charging. I removed the aftermarket radio that was in here and just put a plate for the time being. And I also installed an aftermarket full sweep uh, water temp gauge um, since the, uh, the stock gauge, the, the stock gauge quit working. So anyway, I can keep a better, an a better eye on the temps with this. Um, I did have plans to add another gauge here moving on to something else with this build. So um, I'm just not going to worry about that for right now. I replaced the carpet in here, which is kind of an aftermarket uh, company. I did have to cut it up to get it to fit. And, and the fit was all right. Uh, I wasn't too happy with it, but I mean, it, it worked for the most part. But yeah, I mean, the dash was, was pretty clean. Door cards and everything were really nice in here. Um, only had a couple of minor cracks in the dash but for the most part it's pretty good headliner looked pretty good um, these seats were not the most comfortable but you know if you have one of these there's a lot of options out there to swap to swap for something with a little more support you can't tell but this is the uh, the five speed the w50 that was installed in here and that actually made the biggest difference even just putting a five speed on the 20R would have been a huge difference for how this how this rode on the on the freeway. The additional power of the 20 of the 22R was nice, but the the biggest the biggest upgrade would be that that fifth gear. Just being able to drive this thing at 60 65 miles an hour was kind of a game changer. a quick view with the top down. Let me just pop the roof real quick. Here's the interior. So the plan is to eventually remodel the interior, but we want to get the conversion done first before we worry about that. If you're familiar with the Chinooks, this is a uh, one of the original layouts. And as you can see, the uh, here's the tabletop. And the tabletop sits about here. And there's a leaf that folds up down here. And that's kind of what makes up the bed right here. And it goes goes up just about to the edge of the, uh, the counter. So when the bed is out, it's kind of, it is kind of annoying because you can't, can't get to everything. But the cushions fold down and that's kind of what makes up the uh, makes up the mattress itself. And there was a fridge here, which was removed and we just set it up for some temporary storage. I just have a little, little more storage up here, you know, with a switch panel that controls a couple of different things. There's a controller for the, uh, the diesel heater. But yeah, for the most part, this is just the original layout. There used to be a a closet right here which we we decided to remove because it was just kind of a, a waste of space so when we're out on the road we'll usually have the cooler up here and we just have some more storage down there for shoes and whatnot but um 
you know, still has the original stove, the sink, and the old water tank fits in there. Um, we've recently removed that and took out the uh, the water system because that needs to that needs to be rebuilt. But yeah, so for the most part, it's a it's pretty stock looking. It's about as basic as it gets. Um, we did have to make a blackout shade, and we got some grommets or something to kind of button in there. So we need we have the blackout shade when we're boondocking or, or just need a little bit of just need to control some of the light that's coming in here. There's another shot of the, uh, the interior. And this is another piece of the of the bed setup. This goes in between the uh, the table up here and that leaf back there. So eventually I think what we'll do is convert it to the setup that has the two seats left and right and the table in the middle that um, once you lower the table it kind of creates the sleeping area here versus, you know, splitting up the space down the middle. That layout seems to work out a lot better where you have the left and right counters over here, kind of a workspace and a sleeping space. So we kind of have that separation, but this worked out for what it was, but we'll eventually build something that's a little more efficient. And here's just a quick overview of the diesel heater. I'll eventually do an install video or something to kind of give everyone a, an idea of how I installed this in the Chinook. There isn't a lot of options for where you can put this, but this seemed to work out best. There's the uh, the piping for the heat that comes here. So we can kind of adjust that. And I think this is the five, the five kilowatt heater, which is more than enough for this camper. It's, it's actually too much. It's great when we have it on, uh, but you'll need to Either open up the uh, open up the canvas, or even kind of crack the windows to let some cool air come in here, because this just gets really hot. Which it's I mean it's nice, and we've had it in some really cold temperatures, and you know even with the lack of insulation in here, the di the diesel heater makes up for it. But yeah, so I mean that's what that looks like, and so we'll we'll keep this when we remodel it. We'll just try to see if there's maybe a better place to put it, but. I'm guessing it's probably going to stay in this in this vicinity here. So, and we still have the old inverter. I mean, that'll be upgraded as well. But that's what it looks like. It still works. So we've kept it. We have one one set of plugs there. But yeah, shag carpet and all. You know, again, this is just kind of a an overview of what things look like in its stock form.